understanding inflation targeting and the factors influencing rates of inflation in India. How inflation target became global economic gospel. Why do developed countries have low inflation while many developing countries experience high inflation rates? Zero or low inflation is mostly linked to structural factors such as aging in contrast to India which has a very young and booming population. Globalization, new technology and the level of debt and central banks in developed countries face the consequences of historically low inflation adjusted real interest rates. Many economies with substantial debts are struggling with low inflation causing real interest rates to plummet to zero. Governments seek to increase inflation as a modest inflation rate of 1% to 2% is generally considered beneficial for the economy. Low wage growth in developed economies contributes to low inflation levels. Unlike India, where wages experience comparatively higher increases. As we can see from the images, Indians working for tech and gaming companies to get highest salary hike in Asia in 2023. Indian employees likely to get 15 to 30 percent salary hike this year amid layoff season as per report. And five in 10 employees expect more than 12 percent salary increase in 2023 as per survey. And the Reserve Bank of India faces unique challenges distinct from the developed world. Interest rates and inflation. Developing countries experience higher interest rates and higher rates of inflation, which is beneficial compared to earning low or negative interest rates. The debate surrounds the optimal inflation rate, whether it should be in the range of 1 to 3 percent as the inflation rate that persists in the industrialized economy or should it be in the range of 6 to 7 percent. What inflation figure is the best? India's threshold inflation level is 6 percent. Threshold inflation is crucial for achieving potential growth as exceeding this level can harm economic progress. An RBI study emphasizes the importance of maintaining India's inflation at a higher threshold compared to the advanced economies to achieve its full growth potential. Failure to do so would result in a long-term imbalance and requiring constant policy interventions for stability. Inflation targeting. Inflation targeting is a central banking policy that aims to achieve a specific annual inflation rate by adjusting monetary policy. New Zealand pioneered inflation targeting in 1990 and it has since been adopted by 36 countries. In August 2016, India adopted inflation targeting which was set at 4% with an upper limit of 6% and a lower limit of 2% keeping the lower tolerance band at 2% aligns with the advanced economies inflation targets. Inflation targeting has brought accountability to the Reserve Bank of India, which is now required to justify to the government if inflation exceeds the specified range for three consecutive quarters. Maintaining the flexible inflation targeting framework provides stability and allows the Monetary Policy Committee to work towards the 4% CPI target. Setting a target below the trend can have a deflationary impact exceeding the natural capacity of the economy to achieve the target. Inflation targeting is based on the belief that price stability promotes long-term economic growth. Unlike other strategies such as targeting exchange rates, unemployment rates or nominal GDP growth. Inflation targeting focuses primarily on controlling inflation. 
the image shows a decline in the rate of inflation from fluctuating at plus 10 percent to the current range of 4 percent plus minus 2 percent between 1987 and 2028. The rate of inflation declined to 4.25 percent in May 2023 from 4.70 in April 2023 and is to stay between 4% and 5% for the foreseeable future. High inflation in India spanning 56 years before the adoption of inflation targeting in 2016 has had a long-term negative impact on the Indian economy. And the repercussions of this damage are still being felt today, such as high inflation reduced the purchasing power of the Indian rupee impacting the standard of living and making it challenging for individuals and households to meet their expenses. It caused decrease in foreign investment. High inflation made India less attractive for foreign investors due to increased business costs resulting in a slowdown in foreign investment and reduced economic growth. It reduced savings for Indians high inflation devalued savings, leading to a decline in investment rates and ultimately reducing economic growth. It caused financial instability for Indians. High inflation posed challenges for long-term financial planning due to the difficulty in anticipating its prolonged impact. It, <coughs> sorry, it affected global trade, high inflation hindered the competitiveness of Indian products in the global market by increasing prices, resulting in reduced exports. This trade imbalance led to a trade deficit as imports became relatively cheaper compared to Indian exports. How inflation targeting saved us all. How the rate of inflation has changed from what it was in 1960 to 2021. Over the span of 60 years, the rate of inflation in India fluctuated from the lowest at minus 7.6% in 1976 to a record highest of 28.6% in 1974. During the observation period from 1960 to 2021, the average rate of inflation was 7.5% per year. Overall, the price increase was 7704.85 percent an item that cost 100 rupees in 1960 was costing 7804.85 rupees at the beginning of 2022 without inflation targeting in 2016 we'd most likely still have an 8 percent plus year on year rate of inflation now and even rbi wouldn't be accountable Inflation targeting has saved us by reducing the average rate of inflation between 1960 to 2015 of 7.69% to 7.34% between 1960 to 2023 since it was adopted in 2016. If we had adopted it in 1990, the same time as when New Zealand did, it would have further lowered the 62-year average rate of inflation, assuming a fixed year-on-year -year rate of inflation from 1990 to 2023 at 4.5%. It would have reduced the 62-year average to 5.94% from the current 7.34%. Benefits of inflation targeting. Inflation targeting allows monetary policy to focus on domestic considerations and respond to shocks in the domestic economy, unlike a fixed exchange rate system. It reduces inv investor uncertainty and enables better anticipation of interest rate changes for investment decisions. Anchored inflation expectations enable monetary authorities to adjust policy interest rates to counter economic fluctuations. Transparency is enhanced through regular communication with the public, 
facilitating informed decision making, reduced uncertainty and increasing the effectiveness of monetary policy. This transparency and accountability are crucial in a democratic society. Inflation report. The RBI publishes the inflation report to provide its views on past and future inflation performance and monetary policy. Recently, the RBI released a report on currency and finance, emphasizing the effectiveness of the inflation target and advocating for its preservation. Inflation targeting has been successfully implemented in numerous countries over the past two decades, proving its flexibility and resilience. The image demonstrates how inflation targeting has contributed to reducing the inflation from over 8% in 2012 to below 5% in 2020 and to 4.25% in May 2023. The RBI's inflation targeting regime has played a stabilizing role in managing price rises in India. The central government in consultation with the RBI maintained the inflation target at 4% with an upper tolerance level of 6% and a lower tolerance level of 2% for the period of April 1st, 2021 to March 31st, 2026. May the force of price stability be with you. Please go through the description for the sources for this presentation. I've shared the link to my next presentation. What is the realistic amount of money we will need in our lifetime? at the end of this presentation and do not forget to check out the playlist for more presentations if there is something to gain and nothing to lose by asking by all means ask thank you for taking the time to watch this presentation i sincerely appreciate it namaste